Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the uh, Sunderland Select Board. It is March 28th, 2022. Let's call to order at 631. First order of business we have up is the approval of the uh, March 21st minutes. Motion. Second. We have a motion made and seconded to, to accept the minutes as presented. Any comments? Changes, concerns, hearing none. All those in favor, please signify by and say an aye to accept. Aye. aye. Jeff, three zero, please. Next order business, we have a one day <clears throat> liquor license for August 20th. Holy moly, August 20th, that's a lot. Don't rush our summer already, my friend. <laughs> Holy moly. August 20th, 2022, in uh, Willem Sisma. Mm hmm. Uh, oh, congratulations, the wedding reception, huh? Yeah, thanks. At, uh, at the town park? Mm -hmm. Jeff, what can you fill us in about that? Um, we asked the uh, fire chief, police chief, board of health agent, uh, and building commissioner, I think um, nobody had any concerns, all approved, so we're all good. Okay. Any comments, thoughts, no. concerns? No. Seems good. Let's ask for a nice day for that day. Exactly. Hopefully you get good weather. It's the one thing you can't control. It's always sunny in Sunderland, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to hold you to that, Tommy. Yeah, yeah I know. As long as long, I heard it, only if you have a tent ready, yes. then it's sunny. There you there go. You go. <laughs> Surest way to ward it off. All right, I will uh, ask for a motion. All right, motion we approve the liquor license for August 20th. Second. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to, to uh, approve the liquor license contingent upon the town's uh, policies. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 That's probably the quickest you've ever been involved with a government body before, isn't it, Will? It's amazing, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Congratulations. Good luck, my friend. Okay, thank you very much. Good luck. Okay, next up. We have Green, Communi Green Communities Application. Aaron, you going to come talk to us with uh, David? Sure. I'm going to so you can hear me better. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> for those of you who don't know me, or for those of you at home, I'm Aaron Fabel. I'm a member of the Energy Committee and the Clerk, and I'd also like to introduce David Goodwin, who's the Chair of the Committee. He's uh, a newer member, and he asked me to do most of the speaking just because I'm one of the fossils or dinosaurs of the <laughs> Committee. Well, I'm older than you are, so I don't know. Having been <laughs> serving since 2005 when we started. Um, so we will be submitting and application for the competitive grant round of the Green Communities Program. This is our third time submitting such an application. And we've been working this time with an energy management company called B2Q Associates out of Andover, Massachusetts. And together with that organization, we've identified a number of potential projects last fall involving energy saving measures uh, at various buildings in town, um, including the public safety complex, Sunderland Elementary School and the Sunderland Public Library. Now we've been using an energy tracking database all these years, recommended by the Commonwealth, called Mass Energy Insight. Laura Williams of our committee has been responsible for entering the data all these years, uh, which uh, basically the utility data, the town's energy expenditure of the various departments in town as the bills come in. Now, Mass Energy Insight also has a facility inside of it called Buildings to Target, which highlights those buildings in town that uh, use the most energy per square foot and therefore could most benefit from energy conservation measures. Um, the two buildings that consistently come up at the top of that list are the Public Safety Complex <laughs> and the Sunderland Elementary School. No, no surprise there. Yeah. And these are precisely the buildings that have received most of our attention uh, over the years. And I don't need to tell you that the public safety complex has been an energy problem from, from the beginning. 
Yeah. And uh, what unfortunately made matters worse was an oversized and overly complicated building automation system installed as part of an energy performance contract with Siemens about 12 years ago. This is even before we got into the Green Communities Program. It has never worked well and has apparently caused problems in the building with energy balancing. Some parts of the building are overheated, causing personnel to open windows in the middle of winter. And some parts are underheated, probably prompting people to bring in space heaters. Uh, clearly a waste of energy. Um, sometimes the system was actually blowing hot air in the summer and cold air in the winter. And so, uh, that's not normal. <laughs> some, some, some it's normal in our public safety complex. Yeah. Um, there were also problems with air infiltration around the windows. So this was greatly improved a number of years ago when we installed window inserts in that building, as we did in this building here at the town offices. We have been working in recent weeks with Fire Chief Steve Benjamin in conjunction with B2Q to try to get to the bottom of the problems with the public safety complex. And Dan Nelligan of B2Q suggested applying for a meta grant, a municipal energy technical assistance grant through DOER, Department of Energy Resources, to finance a full recommissioning study on the building to really try to get to the bottom of things. This seems like the best option, but then just yesterday, we heard from Chief Benjamin that they are doing away with the Siemens controller entirely in that building. And I quote from his email, the tipping point came this past week when the hard drive on the computer was confirmed to be corrupted. We have no choice but to move the system to a thermostat controlled platform on an emergency basis. And with all of the upfront and maintenance costs and comfort challenges that we've experienced, I don't see us going back to a computer-controlled system." End quote. So now it looks like a full recommissioning study is off the table, at least until we figure out what's going on with this new adjustment. Um, but this is not the end of the story for that building. There are still some serious building envelope problems there that need attention. Um, but these will probably have to wait until another Green Communities grant cycle. I don't think we could put something together by the deadline, which is April 22nd, just in a few weeks' time. When the program opportunity notice was released a few weeks ago by the Green Communities Program, we immediately noticed that there were newer, tighter restrictions than in the past. For example, we had, we had planned to complete the LED lighting retrofit that we started two years ago at the center of the library. There were parts of it left undone due to cost overruns at the time, as you might remember. But now we read that green community funding for LED lighting is only available to public school buildings, and the library no longer qualifies. So that project had to be abandoned. We will be replacing some of the fluorescent lighting at the elementary school with LEDs, though most of that was completed at the end of 2019 and beginning of 2020. But now the stipulation is that the new LED lighting has to be dimmable and has to include control systems. So we've been working with JK Energy on this project, the same company we worked with last time, uh, to see if we can accommodate these new restrictions. Another project at the elementary school that had been proposed by B2Q and by energy resources before them was the installation of variable frequency drives on two of the air handling units, the motors involved, involved with them. And three years ago, we were told that the Siemens control system that, uh, controlled, that would control those units was maxed out and there were no more control points available. And that made the cost of the project prohibitive. This time, B2Q felt that there were worker workarounds to make the project more feasible, and they would meet with Siemens to explore this. However, after they met with Siemens, Daniel Nelligan um, was uh, absolutely flabbergasted at the price quoted to them by Siemens uh, to connect the VFDs. He said it was at least double what they were expecting. Um, the term price gouging even emerged in our conversation at one point. And he said that that price increase now makes that project again unfundable by green communities. Um, the 
payback would just be way in excess of anything that they, they could finance. It would probably be longer than the life cycle of the equipment that they would install. So that leaves us with two projects left for this grant cycle. The LED replacements at the school that I just mentioned, and also... Um, so, so Aaron, can... Yeah. No, can who's, who's telling you that there there's the consultants telling you that you can't that we can't do certain things because of the the well, configuration. The these program says that they will not fund projects that have a lengthy payback period, especially one that's longer than the life expected life. Uh, so so is that so, three years, seven years, or no, longer? Like thirty years. Yeah, I can understand that. That makes sense. No, anything under ten years is, is probably feasible. Yeah. Okay. But, but something like that. Can, can I also ask yeah. that you, I'm going to give a name to, to Jeff, and can you have, and he's, re, he's a, somebody that's retired mm -hmm. that may be able to come and take a look at it also. Okay. He, he's very, he, I'll, I'll, I'll give him a call and ask him if he would be willing to do that, but he, he's retired now and he has extra time and, okay, he may be able to help us. Yeah. Also, yeah, let's, um, we should definitely get together with Steve Benjamin, who knows quite a bit about the history of the building and yeah. what's going on there. I, I, you're, you're right. That, that, it, it, it a long history. Yes. <laughs> so the other project that uh, we're planning on applying for is uh, Police Chief Demetropoulos is interested in purchasing a hybrid electric yeah. vehicle for the department. And because uh, we have been designated as a specially eligible community within the Green Communities Program, meaning that we've, ex we've achieved significant energy reductions for several years now, we're eligible for a $10,000 subsidy or rebate on the purchase of a hybrid vehicle. If we were to buy an all-electric vehicle, vehicle, the subsidy would be even greater, 15000 But the we, chief has picked out a, a car, uh, the Ford Police Interceptor, which is a hybrid vehicle that gets between 24 and 30 miles per gallon. Yeah. The current vehicle gets only 10 to 14 miles per gallon. Yeah. The cost of the vehicle would be $37,535, but to equip it with all the electronics and lighting to make it into a police vehicle, that would increase the cost to $54,000. If we subtract $10,000 from that, it would be $44,000. We, we, yeah. we actually asked the chief to research uh, uh, an all-electric vehicle. Yeah. Not quite and there yet. Yeah, the, well, problem, the problem with that is there aren't any electric vehicles that are yet rated as right, police, for police. So Yeah, he, we, we asked him to look at the Tesla because we've heard that, you know, and while there are some departments that run the Tesla, they haven't met the requirements to be considered police interceptors. So there would be, yeah, we... Well, this wouldn't be an emergency vehicle. Anyway. It would be used for police detail work. But still, it needs yeah, to if you look at the Explorer, I think certain the hybrid, yeah. and that's probably going to be the first available electric, full, fully electric one, I would suspect too. Mm -hmm. Once when it comes around, yeah, we're it. trying. Well, I mean, there's a question: Should we wait, you know, in a, in a well, couple of years until the technology develops and becomes authorized for police work, or should we? I think it now? makes sense getting the hybrid now. I mean, you know, because we'll get immediate savings on that and. Uh -huh. I that will hold us over. I agree with David because I think we can, we can show the town how if you can go from 10, 12, 14 miles up to 20 plus, yep. you can show the town, especially now with gas prices going back up, right. and you can show the town and that they become dependable. I'm, I, I think there's a plus plus with that, Aaron. Crystal, what do you think? Very much so. Well, you know, my background. And, then, <laughs> and well, we also, we also have to get the infrastructure also and so i know there there's there's monies for public parking areas but not for you know to put in the infrastructure there's also now money in green communities program for charging stations uh, good and i think there's money very soon coming on the federal level um, yes there should good. be a lot coming federal yeah and that, we really need to build so that out that's going to change so yeah that's good I suspect it's the but same problem. Vehicle that he's talking about is not plug -in. It's just a like right, just a, a yeah, right. Yeah, yeah it just charges the battery by when it decelerates yeah. or yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, like the and over and everything. Less than what 30, 35, it's electric, but then when it gets above that, it, it yeah. yeah. So that's where, what we're planning on doing. Um, if you have any questions, we'd be happy to try to answer them. No, I, I, I would say there was, there was a, I, I was glad that you guys came tonight because I've been thinking, you know, in after we put in our PV down by the, the elementary school, I was wondering if you guys have, have thought about more PV in town. We've been thinking about doing a solarized uh, program here in Massachusetts. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, it was not offered the last few years. Right. And we were think we've been talking to Deerfield and Conway about going in together to do a solarized. Which nowadays it's solarized plus. It's not just the PV, but it also encompasses Battery. things like heat pumps, uh, electric okay. vehicles, and uh, solar <coughs> solar uh, water as well. So yeah, we've been expanded been, the program quite a bit. Hmm. We actually. When, when the last time when the school was talking about the uh, replacing the boiler, um, you know, we were looking at other green options, mm -hmm. what, what, what's out there and what's available, so. Well, um, and remember we were going to have, you'll have to black ears for this, Crystal, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to bash somebody for a second. Uh, but, go for it. Um, remember we were supposed to have that other um, array down by the safety complex and then a certain company told us well you'd have to have all these upgrades done <laughs> and then put it out of the price range and then of course they went and put those upgrades in for their piece so in in we'll not mention any names in david and <laughs> and so we could look at that theoretically well i and i would agree Agree with that, and I would also look up. We have a place up on Bull Hill Road, also. Mm, that's that, true. That mm. it's yeah. and 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 that that would be there's mm. sun all the time up there. It's got a perfect it's got a perfect orientation. The only problem is that it's not close to um, a transmission line. No, yeah. Do you yeah. know the size of that lot? Because we're looking at, we've been exploring some uh, town owned parcels for a possible transfer <coughs> station. And that's one of the properties that I think was big enough that it could possibly work for that. But it could. It could. I, I forgot. We, we'd have to go on, I, I'd have to go on the plot plan to, yeah. to see. I don't remember what is off. But it, it, was a, it was a good sized lot. I mean, that's why we had originally talked about it, but it didn't have transmission. It didn't have the transmission lines there. It would be pricey to connect that, right? Well, I and, and I say that, that that's, I, I think that may not be as big of a concern as it was back on 15 years ago, yeah. you know, so, and, and, and I, I, and again, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see canopies down at the elementary school also. Yeah. I the mean, park a lot. Yep. Oh, there. I know. I, and, nice. and again, it, there's not a lot there. Mm -hmm. I, I, I doubt if you get 200, you know, you get a 200 KW. Maybe um, this because that's not a very large size. That being said, I mean it probably almost be enough to uh, put a dent into what what is used at the school. Yeah. And if you could talk to like Con Ed or something like that about coming in to do it, because they love to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. The the school. What did we have left in terms of lighting? To not do? a lot. Uh, we did most of it uh, two years ago. There's some yep. parts of it that that didn't get done. Was it classrooms or was it other miscellaneous? Yeah. That's kind of what yeah. I figured, yeah. Well, what was the order of like 50 or 60 total bulbs? Am I remembering that correctly? Yeah, it, was, it was not a lot. It wasn't a lot. Okay. And the other, one of the restrictions for this round of the Green Community's funding is that LED <coughs> lighting replacement can't exceed 50% of your grant application total. I don't know if it's total. Mm. Yeah, the total okay. 20 count, which is $200,000. Mm -hmm. it, it can't be more than 100,000, but they're not going to come in. Uh, um, I mean, the, where we are in the Green Communities Program in terms of our longevity is that, as I mentioned, 
the rules are getting stricter as, as the program has evolved. Right. And also, because this is our third time around, we've done all the easy things already. We've already picked all the low-hanging fruit. So well, now we're sort of looking around what else we can do, and the returns aren't as good. As you kind of knew we'd get to that point at some point anyway. Yeah, so. right. Yep. But clearly, all along, our, our property has been the public safety complex because it's such a, yeah. an energy waste. Yeah. You know, we're certainly not giving up on that and want to pursue some uh, studies to get to the point where we can actually apply for something to make that building much more energy efficient. So, so the long-term goal. Would you, cons would you consider, we still, run, we still run a boiler here, mm -hmm. right? Would you consider doing or looking, having somebody look into, we, we, we already have the uh, uh, mini splits, mm -hmm. but the mini splits don't cover everything. So would we look at would we look at trying to do away with a boiler and putting in ground thermal and and to, to do away to do away with 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 that the oil like, like, like the library yeah you could ground source for yeah for and, and and that would augment that would augment what we have here so so we could now now we would know what the mini splits handle we could re instead of having a, a big Size boiler, yeah. right? You know, we could we could re you know have someone resize resize and and do with the uh, ground. Yeah. From what I heard about ground source seat pumps, is they work well with new building, new construction, but they're a little tricky to install with. They are with older, older. older, older yeah. like buildings. It, it's funny. I, I know <clears throat> there is a, a college, not not UMass, but there was a college um, out in way out in the uh, way out in the western part of the state up in kind of like in the northwest but they did a, a study uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that, that way and and you know it was, it was interesting that they they said that when they do ground source they would be able to do 100 percent of air conditioning but only 20 percent of the heating yeah i could see that yeah and and so that that's why it, it's in in and it'd be very it'd be very interesting because we have the mini splits in here right let you know? them cover the at least the shoulder season yeah so i i would just but again you know you, you're you're right you're, we we need to start looking at maybe not the low low the low hanging fruit any longer and and i i look at the i look at the and I still go back to the elementary school aaron because well, yeah, we wanted to really replace that with something, but then the thing is so bad that we're kind of stuck, yeah. which is too bad. Well, one thing that the Green Communities Program has emphasized, they are very much interested in replacing fossil fuel systems with yep. electrification or some other things. So would, you, would we be interested in doing electric boilers? They're, they're electric. See, the thing with electric, electric boilers is that you know, like versus a fossil fuel, there's sweet spots on a fossil fuel. So you, you're like running 65%. That's that sweet. And then when you get, so you start losing efficiency as you get higher or lower than a certain point. Yeah, like but with range. electric, the only thing you're doing is putting, you're at 95, I think it's like 95% efficient. Yeah, constant. It is because yeah. you just snap in different <clears throat> elements. So it doesn't matter how much. So yeah. if you did, did go and, and you save a lot of room. They're, they're much smaller. Yeah. If we could tie yeah. in an electric boiler with a solar array of some point, some sort, that would be ideal. Well, and especially well, like for this building, if you take away the needs for like hydronic heating, there's got to be minimal like hot water usage, right? I mean, yeah, right aside here. from heat, we get what some What's sinks that? and toilets. So hot water usage. Yeah, here. you know what I mean. Like once building? you subtract out the the hydronic heating, you don't have much hot in the way of hot water needs in this building. This, you know? Uh, I don't think the school's hydronic, though. No, I'm talking in here. Oh, here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here's yeah, different. It's yeah. minimal. But but the, the school, school needs a lot. The, the school, if you put, you know, you <clears> could <throat> you could go with an electric hot electric hot water boiler, mm -hmm. and the one thing we know about the emergency generator and the school is it's way way oversized. way yeah. oversized. Yeah. So. That would that would in case you lost electricity, right. although we okay. never happened with our dependable electrical service in Sunderland. <laughs> I don't work for that company. But, almost, but you could, you you would have you would have 
Right. You could kick that in. If you Although could. most you'd probably be more efficient with a four four eighty volt electric versus two thirty or you know two twenty whatever. But <clears throat> you know, Aaron, that that could be a possible thing also. Right. Could you get? I mean, that would cut down our that would cut down our greenhouse gases. Right. Like get rid of the the fossil fuel heating system first, and then target the generator later with battery backups once we get and that would help us size more solar for down there too once we get a better idea of the usage mm. I bet you didn't think you oh, were you talking about electric <laughs> boilers and I did you Aaron so the problem well, is though ideas. that the, the boiler that's shot right now yeah. that needs to be replaced and the turnaround on all of that is too far out to do anything, right? No? Yes? I, 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 well, I think they already were able to order the boiler. Yeah. That being said, I, I would, I think we really should look at long term Oh, correct. There's no doubt we need to look at long term. And even, yep. even if you put in one electric right now. Because right. there are two, boi the there's two boilers. There are two, so. yeah. Right. That was the thing when they were saying is when it got really cold, they couldn't, they could heat the school probably with the other one if it wasn't too cold. But yeah, then when it and the school has really the cold. school. Yeah, they don't have. Yeah. But again, we we have to we have to be out in front, and and that would be, you know, there's I don't think there's anybody else in our district that have an electric hot water boiler, but but it's hap I mean it's happening. It's happening all over now. Mm -hmm. yep. So, and you're right. I mean, we got we got. We do have electricity we, from the, that we generate. We'd love to put another, more generation up. We had investigated at one point wood chips or wood pellets, and we were advised against it. Yeah. yeah. And in the state at one time was pushing pellets and biomass, and, yep. and they backed off from that. So I don't know if that's good or bad, but. Um, there, there are reasons for that, I think. Yeah. Right, so. Okay. Right. How's that? That's where we are. Good. I, I, it, I thank you for coming tonight, guys. Yep. Appreciate it, Dave. Thank nice you. meeting you also tonight. Yeah, too. David, Aaron, did you guys want to mention anything about this weekend? Sure, yeah. So this weekend at uh, Frontier Regional High School is a climate change workshop. It's open to, I think, all four towns and probably even way beyond. It's an all-day thing from 9 till 3, being sponsored by the Deerfield Energy Committee, I think. And uh, we're speaking at it, as well as, I think, 35 other <laughs> presenters. So it's a, it's a pretty robust agenda. Uh, free lunch is provided. You can register online. Um, at lunchtime, they're having an EV vehicle demo. And a whole variety of things. We're talking about window inserts in the afternoon for one of the workshops. So yeah, that's, I think they have a cap of 150 people and they're up to 89 or 90 at this point. Okay. So they're hoping, they're hoping to get a full, full contingent there. So you know, as you probably know, for many years we've held window insert making workshops at, uh, at the elementary school or at the library. How uh, residents in Sunderland or other towns can come in very, very cheaply build an interior storm window like the ones we have here. Uh, very simple materials, coated with plastic, shrink wrap, take a hair dryer, and make it tight as a drum, and you increase the R value of your window by one or two points for about $25. Not uh, bad. Compare that to a $400 you know, triple glazed window. You get the same results. Yep. And, uh, so we've been offering this for years now. We're going to teach a workshop with, with sort of Teaching them how to fish. Uh, make their own there you go. <laughs> inserts. What is the site that you register at? Uh, it's through the Deerfield um, Town Clerk, I think. We have information um, on the link to from the Energy Committee's webpage. Oh, okay. Website. It's on the yeah. Town's webpage? Yep. Okay. 
Perfect. It's on the and is there a list of the presenters on yeah, that? There's an agenda that's, that's, I believe, posted online. Okay. I, would, I can share that with you, too, if you would like to follow up on that. I would. Good. All right, thank you. All right, very much. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks. All right, Jeffrey. Um, you want to talk to us about the capital budget? Uh, sure. Uh, unless David wants to talk about it, but I can start. Um, the capital planning committee met last Tuesday. Tuesday? Yeah. Um, and finalized the capital budget recommendations. Um, there were six, seven projects total, um, six from capital stabilization, uh, the sixth year of the truck lease for the highway department. Um, so is this the last year in that? One more year. Yeah. Seven year? Seven, seven year, year lease, yeah. yep. Okay. Uh, the purchase of a 12 inch milling head that attaches to the whacker that we have that will help make uh, pothole patchings um, l more more permanent that's probably not the, the uh, best phrase. much better repair we'll yeah like will really last good. the repairs will last longer yeah you can actually do a nice cut out mill you know mill the shape and okay. right um, so is this going to do, is it going to be hot patching? Yeah. yeah, full on patch patch, okay. good patching. Um, also the library um, annually comes in for HVAC capital funds um, and then they came in with a request to redo the carpets and I think between the, the carpets and um, moving the stacks and everything, the total request was about 66000 mm -hmm. and uh, the Capital Planning Committee talked about it, and um, really the issue mm -hmm. was the carpet was coming up or buckling in the children's room, so... Um, try that first, right? Right. Yeah. The, the suggestion was to replace the carpets there first, and... Um, see how that goes so that that was the 18,000 for that uh, in the elementary school uh, 3,000 uh, excuse me 13,800 um, to replace the glycol in some of the uh, sprinkler loops and then 9,600 for gable vent and soffit repairs um, those all six of those projects were recommended out of capital stabilization for a total of one hundred and one thousand three hundred six dollars and forty eight cents. Um, and then there was one more uh, request from wastewater treatment plant to repair the concrete and slide gates, which would come at, that's twenty five thousand out of the sewer reserve fund for capital. Um, so I think the Capital stabilization override with the two and a half percent for this year was about 122,000. So there's about 20, 21,000 that would carry over next uh, to next year. So it would care. That money would stay there. We wouldn't. It would be available for appropriation in addition so to... So next year, look, it's like the 2.5% up, you'd be that full amount plus the 21000 Correct. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So they give us a little, little bit. Yep. Do, do, do you have any other... Are there, are there any other capital, David, that, that's going to be funded to other methods that you know of? Well, we wanted to get this stuff done, but then we were talking about some stuff for our part, right? Right. So the, yeah. there were two recommendations um, as far as priorities for ARPA funds. One is the replacement of the phone system uh, for twenty thousand seven hundred and fifty at at the school. At yeah. the school, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. But I thought I thought that that was that I would I was surprised not to see it on the list because I thought that was a high priority, right? 
Because yeah, we we figured we'd maybe switch it to ARPA to try. No, to that's no, no, that's fine. I, yeah, I, but I, it I, is I, it is up there. Yeah. But when when they they had identified it as a big concern, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So you're thinking ARPA, the phones? Yeah, the phones, and then um, the, the facilities director is meeting tomorrow with a vendor to get an updated quote. Uh, they want the schools requested not everything for the oil tank, but just a gauge that will help alert in case there is a, a spill. It's a remote, a remote oil tank gauge that is movable if the tank needs to be replaced it can be moved to a new tank or if the location of the tank is moved so it's reusable um but they they felt that that it was important to have that aspect of it so they are yeah with the tank in the ground we can better monitor any leakage or anything like that you know until and i think it's more i believe and and if anybody who's on or in the audience knows more about it feel free to hop in but i believe that the um jessica are you uh, uh peter would know more about this than i would I believe it's actually to monitor the level of oil and it would indicate a leak because they can, can check the it right now. Right. They, there's no way to monitor, remotely monitor the level of the oil. So I don't think it would necessarily de de detect a leak, but it would detect something is going well, you on. Can the oil right, like if fast. there's suddenly like over the weekend, you know, you, you start losing more or something. Yeah. Okay. So I'll have more information next week um, as far as an updated quote. And, um, and then in the longer term, I guess less immediate needs um, and things that we need to get, put a, put a finer tip on. That's not the, the phrase I'm Point looking for. It. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, a, a better, a clearer quote for the replacement of the front steps in this building and refinishing yeah. the wood floors, um, or clarity on what the scope of those projects would be. Um, mm. The public safety complex, HVAC, um, exhaust. Oh, but Aaron, Aaron and the energy community are working on that, right? They are working on that. that is the goal but it it's still on the list for potential arpa funds okay. yeah. um exhaust removal system at public safety complex and then uh so, so who, who have you talked to about the exhaust have you talked to anybody uh chief benjamin okay can you he, find he, out who he's talked to yeah yeah because he had that system that has he talked to, did he talk to you guys uh, he came in and did like an, a little overview of it. Um, I'm trying to remember the name. I don't. I can't remember the name of it. But. I, I would just. I would just. I think I would recommend talking to Deerfield because Deerfield is just doing it on the South County EMS building in the Highway Road. So it and and I think. The South Deerfield Fire District just did it, I think. I think I remember that they okay. said that. So I think they've been doing three of them. So they, you may want to talk to them and say what lessons learned, yep. good, yep. bad, you yeah. know what I mean? Yep. See what kind of problems they had with it. You know, there, I, I never understood why we want to recreate the same problems over and over again. <laughs> Gives people something to, something to talk about, apparently. Well, you know, I... I, I know when we we had Aaron was nice what he said about the public safety complex, mm -hmm. but I mean if if anybody had talked to us or that, and I know other people put in similar systems because I know they designed other ones, we could have told them right right from the beginning not to do it. I wish somebody would Bigger follow is up. Not always better. Well, <laughs> I, I I I just know that there's we had problems from day one, so. 
somebody's father was very upset about that. <laughs> I heard about it a few times. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it's a topic, topic of dinner conversation more than once at my house, too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay, what else you got? Uh, that That is the capital budget. Anything more? I don't know. Peter, Keith, Craig, anything from the school? Uh, Tom, the only thing I would I would add. We hear you. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yep. yep. Okay. Um, no, Jeff has done a good job of uh, of laying out the uh, the the projects that we're hoping to add to the list, and uh, uh, the one thing there as far as the the oil tank is that they had had a more uh, expensive plan but it still wasn't one that we were really happy with and the decision was that the one thing that really mattered in terms of getting done was right now we have no gauge uh, working gauge on the tank I mean the only thing we got is a long pole and uh, uh, to get something that uh, would be such that, you know, if there was a problem on a weekend, if there's a problem at night, you can respond to it a whole lot quicker than if it's the next time you go out there with a pole to measure the thing. And uh, uh, with the idea to get something that, uh, if we are making a change down the road uh, with, uh, you know, the tank that we're using, because it is an old tank, um, that this gauge would be transferable to, to anything new that we might replace it with. Hey, Peter, so, do, do you know, or, or, Greg or Keith, do you know if they put something inside that mech room, if there was a water leak that would notify them if there's water leaking on the floor after, uh, after the plumbing problem that we had? Um, did, did you know anything about that? I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I'd have to ask uh, uh, Bill this, uh, about that, but we, we can send him a note and get an answer for you. And actually, you know, if we do, we'd probably get a good break on the insurance too for that I I just know from where where I work we we do that quite a, quite often after we've had a problem so yep. um, maybe you know and it, it works I mean those the, the hockey pucks the hockey puck we call them hockey pucks they work well and if the water gets in there and it just gives you that heads up so you can you know that that much quicker and now they they actually make them so they're wi-fi connected so right you can get an alert on your phone to say hey yeah they just yeah so maybe you can talk to is it it's bill elliott right or bill hildreth huh hildreth yeah. hildreth. hildreth yeah maybe you can talk to bill and ask him if he can look into that because I, like i know they do come wi-fi now yep okay everything's got wi-fi in it now so so we took we took your the capital for the school is addressed then that the only thing then left outstanding and this is a biggie but we weren't expecting it to be dealt with this year but to start the conversation which is dealing with the roof and um that's something that uh um, like i said they you know the plan is that ex expecting you know a minor amount of patching to take place on a yearly basis but uh, you know, whether it's another year or two or three or something that, uh, uh, you know, working together here, we come up with a way uh, to how we're going to finance the thing. And uh, there are a couple of big projects uh, also coming from the highway department in terms of uh, two vehicles that uh, are, are coming at us in the next year or two. And, uh, um, you know, just those together there, we, it's going to be more than we're going to cover with our current system of uh, generating uh, funds for capital projects so that's something that uh, between your board and capital planning and the, uh, the people in the different town buildings and departments uh, uh, we need to have a way that uh, that we can finance that the town will support yeah he, so that, that discussion still has you know I mean you know the different ways it would be wonderful if the capital uh, override uh, which started out as 100,000 uh, and, and sort of as a test basis. I mean, that's turned out to be a, a wonderful program and, 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 you know, great thanks to, to, to those of you on your board there that, that uh, came up with that and, and implemented it, got the town to approve it. Uh, you know, sure wish it was like twice that amount uh, in terms of what our needs have been. 
Um, and so whether, you know, going and trying to expand that number um, so that we would get a larger annual uh, capital resources to use or uh, doing some sort of uh, packaging of several big items into a bond that we pay off over five or ten years or something like that, um, another possibility, but um, these things, you know, it, it, it's good to have them on the table just because you know they're not going away, okay? They're not going to fix themselves, and so we need to uh, gather our wits and figure out how we can do it in a way that the town will support. And I think the town will support stuff they see is going uh, to take care of our infrastructure because long run, you know, that's the smart thing to do. And, and you know, if you show me you're trying to do the smart thing, I think there's no doubt the town will support it. So, uh, just we need to figure that out and the select board has to be central to that process. Um, well, I think right now, Peter, if you look at the budget, um, if you look at the uh, line items that are debt, it's almost pretty non-existent. So it's almost nothing. Yeah, it's pretty. So, so we paid down our debt over, and and no one has. Well, not too long ago, everything is relative. But we were talking about maybe having to do something, not having enough space in the elementary school. That does not appear to be the problem any longer, at least at this moment in time. So it, it may be it it may be worthwhile to look at the long term capital expended. You know, where you know if you need a roof at the uh, if you need a roof at the. Uh, elementary school it'd be nice to know what's going on at the library roof and and all these and 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 come up with one plan to do them at the same time and you could like you said bond for 10 or 15 years so yeah good idea good look at that but i just think i i think that it has to be more than just a discussion of a capital planning committee or of one of the departments or something like that i think that it has to be a town-wide discussion yeah and certainly, <laughs> certainly the expertise that you have on on your board has to make sure that, that you guys need to be uh, in on this discussion. You know, I would say sort of from the beginning rather than just sort of wait and see what people come up with and then weigh in at the end. I think really, you know, Tom, you particularly, you know so much about this stuff that, that you need to be there early on. I, I, I think, Peter, to tell you the truth, I mean, that's what we try to like to do is, is, is bring people on board as soon as possible so we can talk about it a little bit so people are it's like a they're they understand that something's going to happen, you know. Right. So it doesn't come up at the last, right? The last. So yeah, I, I agree with that. Okay. And that's been that's been even like the beginning of this winter when we started this budget cycle. Um, you know, the school. I I sort of went to Darius and I said, look, what do we got coming down the pike at the school that we need to deal with? And and you know, he, he sort of gave us the list and we made wonderful progress on that list except the one. That, you know the one big one on there was the roof and I knew that we weren't going to be doing that this year but it's important to get you know get people talking about it get people thinking about it get people realizing it's out there and we can't just you know forget about it and so um, you know that's the first budget season to me is you know I think we've made a good bit of progress in in, in the various participants in town government plus the folks in town uh, in, in terms of realizing that 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 job has got to be done and now we got to start seriously looking at the various possibilities both for doing the job but also for how we finance it well, we well you're right when when, when 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 bill when bill came i mean and he start, first started talking about the roof and then he said that you're spending four to five thousand dollars right now every year repairing the present roof i mean that was that was that was new information to us and i'm sure no one else in town knew that either so that that's you know at some point you get the the diminishing returns and that's what that's what's going to happen if you don't maintain but again you have you start that conversation and and like if you if you 
if anybody's paid attention over the last 20 years at the public safety complex and didn't know that there was a problem with the HVAC down there, shame on all of us because we've known that there's been a problem with the HVAC from the beginning. So, so we're, and we just keep trying to fix it, you know, and hopefully eventually we're going to get it done right sooner or later. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just can't make a decision. Can't have a discussion. Mm -hmm. So I just want to mention that you do have four members of the school committee present. There's one in the room that you might not be able to see. So I just wanted to make you all aware of that because I don't think there was a school committee meeting posted. So that, that doesn't make sense to me. I agree. This I, is a public I, I, meeting. I, I, your, your I agree. Job is I just don't want anybody to get in trouble. <laughs> your your job is to keep us out of jail. I understand. I mean, that and the town clerk keep us out of jail, hopefully. As long as we only discuss things on the agenda, though, it should be okay. Right, on our agenda. Exactly. Agenda. As long as you don't veer from that and start talking about, you know. I, Jessica, I don't, I don't. So far, I defer, we're safe. I defer to Jeff on this. I, I think that. As long as they don't make it, they can't make a decision. But you say they can't discuss. A quorum of a committee is not supposed to discuss a topic within the committee's purview outside of a publicly posted meeting. Wow. Of the committee. Right. Is my understanding. So yes, the general discussion. And better safe than the, sorry with that. Yep. I just wanted to point yep. it out because I no, noticed it. Sorry guys, I didn't want to. Well I don't want to send you guys to jail. All right. Um, no, <laughs> me too. I, I volunteer. But like we're going to be right around that time too. A couple of years, of like Frontier is going to start needing. I mean, talk about roof repairs. Yeah, I just, right? I just think it's important. I just important. I think it's important that we have those conversations. We we get the conversation, and in, in in a timely fashion. So, like I said, you know, you're saying if they're saying you got four or five thousand dollars of of repairs for right now. Okay, maybe that's maybe that's acceptable for, but unfortunately, like we all know, that's a four hundred thousand dollars. So if we were doing three four hundred dollars at our home, we may not think it's a lot, but when you get at your home and you start getting five six a hundred or a thousand dollars, you say, hey, I got to replace my roof. Exactly, because it's right? at that point that you've got problems. So now they're doing four or five thousand, so that's one percent the cost of a new one, a new roof, and now it's like we sh we need to start being we need to start paying attention to that. Right? No, that was replaced after the collapse, right? The entire roof was the entire roof was is re was replaced because because they changed yeah. because they take they took the the on top of it was flat. So you, you when you looked at it you saw you saw an angle roof but that the top was actually top. flat and there was no ventilation on the top. So yeah. now what they did now you now you have the peak roof with the ventilation you know, a ridge vent, so you're actually venting the heat out. Go figure that. What would you want to do that for? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, all right, all right. Thank you, thank you, guys. Thanks, Tom. All right, Keith or Greg, you want to add anything? All set. All right, thank you. All right, so we have to talk. Anything more on the on the capital budget? Yeah. Chris, are you okay? I'm fine. David, you need anything more? All right, let's talk about we'll talk about the warrant review. How's that? Sure. All right, what do you got for a warrant? Then, then we'll go on to budget and uh, ARPA discussion. So um, we briefly went through the warrant last week, I think. Um, I don't believe, I'm not aware of any uh, prior year bills yet but i'm double checking that we don't have any of those um the uh compensation for elected um offices oh by the way thank you for for letting us know about the uh school committee oh you're welcome no, I, I, again i, I don't want to cut off conversation but i don't want to get anyone in trouble either. I, I know we i but i i want to i want to thank you because that's
something's going to keep us <laughs> out of trouble. So thank you, Jeff. Um, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the operating budget, which we'll talk about next, uh, capital budget that we just talked about. Um, there is a warrant article for retiring um, elementary school employees. Uh, so, so on that, have you asked? Have you asked Ben and Darius if they have a plan? If it, if what 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 it looks like in the next four or five years? If that are we going to see see similar retirements? I have not. I okay. will ask. Can you just can you see what 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 they uh, look like? Yep. Jessica, did you know? We never discussed by name which employees are retiring. Okay. I, I was just wondering if, if, if they're looking. They could project out. Yeah, if we, could, yeah. A just number. so, just so right. we know. Okay. Yeah. But you can I'm talk with dear, uh, I mean, Ben about that. He may be able to. We don't have to know who. It's just yeah, if, they, just if they're if they starting to look at that. Yep. Okay. Good. Um, there are two CPA articles. Yeah. Um, one to. Uh, redo the restrooms to make them accessible. Um, and I think the last time I talked about it, it, we had talked about potentially using some ARPA funds just for some little bit of repairs, okay, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but this would be the full renovation that was designed um, to, to match the kayak kiosk. And uh, the second- and It's already designed. It's already designed yeah. and engineered, yep. Um, the second is a uh, transfer to the Conservation Trust, um, and the reason for that is sometimes properties become available in the middle of the year and can't wait for an appropriation, um, and so this just uh, helps the Conservation Commission act more quickly um, on important can, can you ask them um, for our next, what they have in their reserve trust now? So that I'm sure some of the last got town meeting. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we've been doing that for years, like the the shift over to have a fund for that. Yeah. Um, and then the third one is sort of the the remainder of the funds article, um, which is administration uh, paying all the principal and interest for the purchase of 120 North Main, and then. Um, distributing the rest of the reserve funds between the uh, categories, the open space, housing, um, and historic preservation, yeah. as well as undesignated. Yeah. Um, the next article, there was a request from the schools to create a revolving fund for foster care transportation. Uh, my understanding is that starting this year, I think, um, the state offered school districts or schools that report on uh, transportation for foster children reimbursed. Um, That's like all the way over. It could be reimbursed and, and the language of the, um, of the law, I believe, says that they it needs to be appropriated with, um, it can be spent without further appropriation. So in discussion with other town administrators and council, that sounds like a revolving fund. So creating a new revolving fund so that any reimbursement from the state would go into the revolving fund and then the school could spend out of that fund. Mm -hmm. And then we do the reporting. Like Peter, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I think it was something we discussed at the school committee uh, meeting earlier this winter and we do get cases where uh, we have foster kids that uh, we have to provide transportation for and the state has a program to reimburse some percentage of it. I, my memory is that it's something in the vicinity of 50% but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, the process for the town signing up for this was that uh, even though we, you know, we got, we went through it and we voted uh, to recommend approval of it, the authority to actually approve it uh, 
and join the program rests with the select board so that uh, the school committee voted to recommend to your board that you approve it, but the actual decision is up to you. So, so you can, can you explain, so if there's foster kids in town, they have the opportunity to go to their school before they became foster kids? Is that? Right. Is they've that, been living in Sunderland and attending Sunderland Elementary, but they get placed into foster care in Hadley. They can get transported back to Sunderland to have the stability of attending the same school, the same classroom, the same teacher, the same friends. Okay. All right. Right. Is there and, like a distance on that or something? I mean, we're not going to pay to, I mean, it would just seem, you know, transporting a kid from Worcester to here or something like that. And so the state in the state's going to pick up that transportation cost. State, a percentage the state will reimburse of that. for part of that transportation cost. Hmm. Sounds okay, like an unfunded mandate to me. Well, right now we're paying the entire amount, so right. Part is better than none. It is. Right. It is an unfunded mandate. I'm just saying it sounds <laughs> like an unfunded mandate one. to me. It's like because and it's again, I'm. I'm. Mandate. This not a. I'm not saying it's a good policy or bad policy. I can understand the policy. It was just, I thought, <laughs> we're not supposed to do unfunded mandates. But the state auditor just put out a report on that. That's what I thought. And they said there was no unfunded mandates, right? I haven't read the report. Yeah, yet. I think that's what they said. It, All right. Um, All right. And, but I think one of the things that, that Peter mentioned, which we hadn't gotten to, is that there's also, in addition to setting up the revolving fund, there's an MOU that would yeah. have to be signed. But yeah. I, that would. And, and again, I'm, it, to me, it, it's I'm not questioning the policy. I just I just sometimes question, and it states well intention. It's just how they they pay for things that they mandate. It's just anyway. Sorry, I will get off the horsey. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> so no. So the the next uh, is the expenditure limits for our current revolving funds. Um, no changes to any of those limits. Um, asked for feedback and have not heard yet that any of them need to be increased. I think we increased them last year. Um, the next article is an amendment to the personnel bylaw in regards to holidays, and it is uh, at the recommendation of the personnel committee to um, not enumerate each of the holidays, um, but just to generally say all holidays listed in Mass General Laws Chapter 4, Section 7, Clause 18, applicable to Sunderland. So Bunker Hill Day, things that are um, Boston-centric would not be uh, applicable. Um, and this would also, you know, if th there's a cost associated with changing our bylaws. So if the state decided to add a new bylaw and make it a requirement um, that towns adhere to it, we wouldn't have to go through that again. If they change the name of a holiday, we wouldn't have to worry about that. Um, so we. So, but we're all. But we are adding an additional holiday. It would yes. include Juneteenth. Juneteenth. Yes. Huh. Juneteenth. Because yeah. that was and, added. And, by the state. But so some somehow we have to make sure we mention that also, in our presentation. Yes. Oh, this bylaw. Okay. Good point. Yep. yep. And again, it's a, it's a state holiday. Correct. Okay. Yep. It's kind of like a twofer. We recognize Juneteenth, which we should clearly call out, and then it saves administrative time and money referring to the state list of them. And, and again, it's I, 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 we just want to make sure that right, you know, people for, probably forgot. No, no to self. Let's. Because yep. we are we are making a slight change. Right. We should do that when, they, when we hit the explanation point of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um. Let's see, uh, the next warrant article 
is a request from the Senior Center to fund phase two of the needs assessment, um, our portion of the needs assessment. Um, did you have to tell what how much that is? We did. Did you want to put the numbers in there? Uh, I, I I I would think that they would make us to say how much we're going because you're you're warning. You have to warn. Well, this warns. I guess in the, the motion, topic. right? In, in the, the motion, motion we have to. Yeah, but okay. I mean, it, I'm not hiding it. Three three thousand seven hundred fifty. I can put numbers. How much on each of these? Three thousand seven hundred. Okay, it it would be anyway. our portion. Yeah. I think the total mm -hmm. is fifteen thousand. Something like that. Um, because then it'll save somebody from asking the question, you know, because it'll be right there for them. They well, in, 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 in the motion, in the motion it, it'll be there. So this in this the, warns the inhabitants that we are talking about spending money for a needs assessment. Right. Yeah, right. But the the the, the motion would des de describe exactly how much. Exactly, okay. and where it would come from. Yep. And where it come from? Okay, that's fine. Um, the next article is uh, five thousand dollars. To continue membership in the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District. So, okay, that's fine. Um, the next article is uh, eighteen, slightly over eighteen thousand dollars to replace the walk-in cooler at Frontier Regional. And then, uh, oh not on here but will be on here by next week i just need to confirm the number is and this is probably well i'll say the rest is consent articles there's one more article that hasn't been added which is a good segue into the budget discussion which is i think it's going to be a hundred and three thousand dollars to cover the deficit in the capital stabilization bill uh capital stabilization fund We're all ears. Uh, I was just going to leave that. that uh, We're all ears, Jeffrey. Pregnant pause to see yeah. if there's questions <laughs> about that. Um, so. Infinite wisdom of accountants. Go ahead. So we had, the good news is our free cash has been certified. It was um, about $393,000. Um, and I the biggest um, reduction to free cash was twofold. Um, one, we didn't correctly report uh, the use of free cash when um, doing the tax rate recap. So we artificially reduced the tax levy and Basically, we said we told them that we were using free cash, but we were we didn't actually, and so or, or we weren't planning to, and we told them we were, and so they said, well, you don't have to raise and appropriate as much because you're using free cash, and so the ta so basically they thought we had more, um, and then the other is that the capital stabilization for fiscal year 21 was not. Um, reported correctly either and so what they did is they subtracted they said that your capital stabilization is about a hundred and three thousand dollars in deficit so we're subtracting that from your available free cash this year and if you don't want it subtracted again you have to make up that balance so so next year in the infinite wisdom of accountants, we're going to find an additional hundred and three thousand dollars in free cash. That's my understanding. Yes. So, did that make sense? Or have less of it? <laughs> no, you're going to have one hundred and three thousand dollars in free cash next year. Right. Go ahead, say something. You're going to say how? How in the heck does this happen? Just well, I'm why? thinking, like, how do we it's prevent it from happening again? Exactly. That's the thing that... Well, I thought we had accountants, yeah. town accountant that make sure that we don't have that problem, but... 
So Jeffrey, you're probably working on that, huh? We are we are working yeah. hard on that. Um, and I will admit, I don't completely understand the situation. It's been explained to me several times. I've asked for it now in writing so that I, I can say, look yeah. at it and, and look up stuff and take my time with it. Um, but that that is the best explanation I can give it. So, so, so was, the was, the problem, it was the problem with the wording of the warrant uh, in, the, in the warrant on the monies that were used or not used? No. It was all on... It was the account? It was... It, uh, it, that was my first question, was did we right. do something wrong at town meeting or, like... And that's a no. In, and right. the answer was no. It was in how it was reported and reported in our system. So in other words, it was an account. Okay. So when you so when you get information that you can relay relay to us, you're going to relay it to us so we can understand. Yeah, I asked what what was supposed to happen. Yeah. What did happen? What we're doing to fix it, and what the implications are for free cash next year. So, what I think those those were my those were my big questions. Yep, those are all the key ones. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, then there's another. Did you understand that, Peter? <laughs> behind the scenes, but <sighs> what about the account? All right. Do you have anything else? <laughs> but um, uh, no, that's that's the war. And then, as I mentioned, uh, the consent articles that are on there. Did you understand that? Um, no. You can say Probably no. about the same level as Jeff, because uh, I haven't sat down and looked at any documents. But um, you know, my sense is that the stuff was not originally, like he says, it was not reported correctly, and therefore, part of what we seem to be losing here may be something that we shouldn't have been claiming in the first place. So we really haven't lost it. But we're also, I think, getting penalized, and that's the money you say we're going to get back when we close the books again right. the next time. Yeah, that and that's how that. So it's just like they're holding one hundred and three thousand dollars hostage. Yeah, yeah. Existentialist Perfect. accounting, huh? Existentialist accounting. Well, it, uh, I'd like to see the written explanation. I'm going to be curious to see that. So, I'll, I'll patiently wait for the written explanation. So, sometimes you learn not to say anything. So I'm not going to say anything because I'll get deeper into trouble. We've been there before. Actually, Tom, if I could just add, we over the over the years or over the decades have had some very competent accountants taking care of the town's business, and so um, and, and and you know involvement also by the select board and finance committee in making sure that the stuff was done right. And I know that we the accountant we had up until not too long ago was not up to the par of what we'd come to expect, and um, we, hopefully that. You know, going forward, we'll we'll be just a whole lot sharper the way the way we should be and the way we have been. You, you know, people. Peter, I, um, two weeks ago at the university. All the accountants from around the state, they around the state, um, were at the university doing their training and their the auditors and accountants. They had a big, big thing like the treasurers do later. And and the hardest thing that we have is that the state of Massachusetts is a is a cash accounting system that's not used in most businesses so most accountants don't not that they not that they can understand it but they're not familiar with it so it's just not a it, it's something that you have to learn and unfortunately and, and I was talking to a couple of the accountants there they the Massachusetts Municipal Association of Accountants and Auditors offer a um, a course, but it's a self-taught course, I believe, um, 
and GCC is this this past year was the first time they and, and we've been asking this for the selectmen's association has been asked for a long time that they they offer this course through the FERCOG and GCC and and they I think there was like 43 people signed up for the class so it's something that's needed um, and municipal and again municipal accounting is tough we have found Sunderland the biggest problem we have is that we don't have a, a, a depth of bench so if an accountant decides to move up, move along we're putting into alert so we use an accounting service that's provided by the, the FERCOG and and they have the same problems we do is keeping keeping help and and people move and so the last couple of years we have had a concern and I I think our Sherry and now Jeff has made our concerns known to the FERCOG and I think they're gonna try to do a better job so it's no but it, it, again it's we're fine we'll get it done we'll get it we'll get it better okay all right so is that it for your uh, warrant yes looks like a 10-minute town meeting <laughs> <laughs> what do you think crystal 10 minutes no. 20 25. All right, 20, 20. I like that. All right, Jeff. Let's <coughs> now, um, are are you getting ready for motions? Uh, yeah. As soon as I have that last article, we're going to okay. do the first draft. Well, you don't even have to. If you want to start bringing motions to us, and we can start adding them, that's that's fine. Also, okay. So we don't have to do everything all at once. That's fine. Uh, FY twenty three budget. Yep, so I think last week we talked about being about $37,000 uh, that we need to uh, close that gap. Yep. And so unfortunately free cash was lower than we anticipated, um, but we did confirm that uh, we were being very conservative in our um, regional transit assessment and reimbursement well our reimbursement for the regional transit assessment mm -hmm. and so we were I talked to the accountants and, and while they would prefer to be conservative with local receipts I think that they they felt comfortable based on the agreement that we have with UMass um, that we could just sort of offset the regional transit increase which was about 40,000 um, with local receipts of the same amount um, so, uh, unfortunately, we're still about 37000 in the hole after that because less free cash, more local receipts of the same amount. Um, it basically was a wash. So, um, we're sort of still in the same position. So, free cash was only uh, certified late last week, so I have not had an opportunity to... Um, find areas of savings that, that we might be able to reduce or eliminate that um, yet but that is that is my primary task now now that free cash has been certified okay so do you want us to start looking at the budget for reductions um, I think that we have to unless I mean uh, the other options that are less palatable are using you know one-time revenues such as you know we're already using a lot of free cash we can use ARPA um, I just want to mention that those are options. right because the other but options otherwise are less in those categories that we put into right for free cash we mean because we do a certain percentage into capital stabilization we can. I don't think, at least the way I read the policy, we don't automatically. What's that now, Davey? Because you know we put certain percentages from free cash into other categories. No, I don't know if that's true. I mean, you can use free cash. We could, 
we could use all the free cash to balance the budget if you want. No, no, I know. That's what I'm saying. I mean, you, you know, that's an option. Yeah. Right. So, so right now you're categories. right now you're yeah. looking from free cash. You're looking at 118 using 118 thousand dollars for the budget. Correct. And you're you want looking at 32 thousand, and and these are just 33 thousand into the OPEB. And, and that and that's all based in and that's all based on um, kind of our policy of, of our free cash use policy right, right. exactly right and then okay. in in my head and we haven't discussed this but I figured free cash was the most likely place to you know we do have the element the retirement warrant article senior center needs assessment mosquito control district walk-in cooler and the hundred and three thousand, and I th thought typically, at least in my experience, those have been fine. So you're gonna have to use. You're, we're gonna have to appropriate one hundred and three thousand dollars of free cash this summer, this year. Yes. Okay. That, that's why that's why I don't like how accounting goes state right. accounting we get double hit and then we get it one yeah. of those back the next I, a long time ago I, I, I Peter and I had a discussion one time and there was a and and I don't know if he even remembers it and it was something like it, it was we got to spend we had to spend forty thousand dollars left and i said oh it's like it's like getting eighty thousand dollars and peter looked at me and he was scratching he said what are you talking about tom and i go well that's how the finances in the commonwealth work it's like so if you don't spend it's like it comes back and doubles and it's like well how does that make sense and it doesn't unless you know how the stupid state does things financially but Whatever. Okay. So we got, we'll take $103,000 out of free cash that we're not going to use, and we're just going to use it as a placeholder, so we're giving ourselves a year of not using that money to make the state happy. Because we already appropriated $103,000. Right. Last year. Right. Okay. Perfect sense. Yeah, I know. I, all, right, all right, fine. All right, so that we, we're look at so we're still looking at thirty seven thousand dollars. Yep. All right. Anything on the budget you'd like to talk about, David, Crystal, Jessica? You know what I'd like to talk about. But I know. Go ahead. No come, no, come on, talk, talk to us. I'm curious, how did you put health insurance into this budget? What's that? S since we're offering a different health insurance plan for next year, how was your health insurance budget figure generated? Uh, our health insurance budget was generated based on the subscribers we currently have um, with the 6.2% increase. Uh, we Again, we don't know what the switch is going to be to people on current uh, plans switching to the new plan or new members adding. So okay. um, we are hopeful that we won't, that, that it'll encourage people to sign up for it and it'll be affordable. Um, but no, hopefully not too many <laughs> that it's unaffordable for the town. So you basically planned that everybody would stay on their current plan and then if they switch to the cheaper plan, then great then that would help us be able to afford more people on the plan, yeah. That was my question. You know oh. what I'd like us to do with that, but we don't have the information yet, so. So you were asking last week if we would offer the new plan at 65%, correct? Uh, my actual ask last week was for us to do a comprehensive survey of the employees to see if we could afford to do that. I 
Yeah, and Jeff and I talked about that, right? Actually offering it. We talked about surveying. Yes, we talked about it. I had concerns with that. Um, because A, I think anybody is going to say, yes, I want less expensive health care. Um, and I have concerns that the survey is informational, but doesn't actually tell us who is going to sign up and who is not. Um, but I think that we, you know, I, we can try and get more information, but I, I don't know that, that it's going to lead to a better informed decision because I don't know how reliable the information is going to be. So, so we, we also talked, Jeff, last week about the different plans that are offered by the different, the different groups. Mm -hmm. So right now we, we, we run our health care through Maya, correct? Yes. And we, you, you've also looked at numbers from GIC? For, yes. GIC and, and Hampshire County and Group Insurance Trust. The Hampshire Collaborative, right? Yeah. All right. So, so how 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 does how does those plans compare? Um. Brief, the brief answer is yeah. Yeah, yeah. they are less expensive and don't provide as many benefits. So I think group insurance was 18% less and Hampshire County group insurance was about 5% less, a little over five. That's about and, as much and of a I, I should mention neither of the plans we could move to this year. Um, Hampshire is not taking any new members and they said to come back and talk to them this fall, fall of 2022. Um, I believe that GIC, you have to let them know 18 months ahead of time, like the December of the year before. It's six months. It's six ahead. months? Okay. Six months ahead. Okay. Six. So it'll only take you for January 1st or July 1st. Okay. Um, and that that's a bit more of an involved process. Um, but what Maya can do is look at a plan and basically customize a plan for us that mirrors what either of those institutions offer. Good, I guess, so you're going to get less. That, that's why, like, you really can't explain this in sound bites because there's too much information. Like, what you said is as close to a sound bite as you'll ever get out of this because you need to sit down. It's kind of like, you know what, it's very similar like comparing job categories from town to town. You know, oh, he's a, a highway guy. It's the same thing. You can't look at it on the face because there's a lot more to it. You may be paying less, but you have to look at all the things that you're getting for that. So you'll be paying more for all your out-of-pocket expenses, less coverage for certain things. So it's not like a, a really simple, straightforward thing. You have to look at both sides of the equation. All right. So one of the things that we talked about was re reformation of the insurance committee, right? Yep. All right. So we have to do that first. And so if we when we bring the the committee together, we should and, and I, I think it should be together soon so that we can, if you do have to make changes by January, whenever, right? Because usually our, our, our discussions on budget starts in November. Right. So can I ask? Are, yeah, go ahead. If, 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 it's, if we're thinking about joining the GIC, the makeup of the insurance committee and how the votes are counted, for each member is different. 
than if we are not considering GIC. Uh, no, well, what? Okay, what 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 I would what I would like what personally is we've been talking for the last three or four years, David, mm -hmm. or maybe longer, four or five years, about going to sixty five percent coverage. Okay, so the first so the first thing is to talk to Maya and say we how can we get to 65% and stay within the parameters like what the GIC in Hampshire is it possible and and in, in that that's what so so as i understand it is that with our present use with Maya we're at 60% but the co-pays may be a little bit better with our plan maybe a little bit better co-pays out of pocket maximums yeah they may a little bit be better they right? are lower on our plan right yes. yep so I guess one question would be if we made the out of pocket similar to GIC, would we be able to get to 65%? Would that be? Yeah, because well, we need to figure out like if we just increased our contribution to 65% now, with everything as is, what would that cost? One. Right, because that would be your first thing, right? To maintaining, see maintaining, maintaining right. as it is. Right, and then add in that extra. So what does that cost us? Right. But then it's like, okay, now if you want to not increase the costs, but be like that, what do we have to change in the plans? You said it originally when you said you really have, you, you want to compare apples to apples. Yeah, because right. you got to look at like, okay, I'm paying, you know, for sake of argument, 100 bucks a month. Here's what I'm getting. But you also have to look at like, okay, so you go to plan A and say, all right, it costs a hundred bucks. What do I get for that? What do I get for you for a hundred? What do I get for you for a hundred? And you have to look at that backside to see like what you're getting for benefits. Cause while a plan might be cheaper, you could be, you know, spinning out a lot more money out of pocket. And and this is where it gets really complicated because that equation can be very different for every single person depending on your medical needs. So Absolutely, David. That's where what you makes are it, in your yeah, life. Yeah, right. And, and and we don't do right. And and we, there has to be an understanding and I would think that's what the insurance group would do. Is that they would bring that information back and yeah. and represent it to the groups they're, they're representing because right? i like to know just like what an increase would cost us you know and then you know if it's too much then we look at okay does that make sense what are our options yes and after time meetings so, okay right yeah yeah i mean they, yeah. we have to submit our information this week because open enrollment starts in a month. Yeah. Well, I think I think it's a little too late for thirty, forty thousand. The only thing we could, the only, in my opinion, I it, it may be too late to do anything for right now for town with town meeting approaching. But I don't think we could get everybody to get get everything on board right now. Right. I mean. Yes, yes, I agree. Because there's kind of like two things. There's like, you know, can we increase our percentage? Is it affordable? And then there's the whole constant juggling of plans and, you know, tweaking them, and, which is always an ongoing thing. Okay. Well, one thing right now, easily, we could, you could tell us, maybe not tonight, but how much if if you if you maintain everything like it is yeah like what and we stay with maya and we went to 65 percent how much more that would cost us right i believe i have the 
updated information from Heather today, and it was about forty-seven thousand dollars. Okay. So it was different than that last. <clears throat> yeah, because it added the six point two, and I I want to. She handed it to me right before we came in here, so I haven't looked at it, but that was. And, and I wanted to confirm something about retiree health insurance as well. So like ballpark, it's say at 45, so it'd be like. Yeah, the last time we checked it was 30, so I would say that's the bottom low end that it could possibly be. Right. And, you know, but again, I will nail that down for. I, I, I think that 45 sounds familiar. All right, because it varies a little, Lisa, but yeah, that'd be about right. So then the question would be, okay, if we wanted to do that, what $45,000 would we cut from somewhere else? Okay. To do that. Did you want to add something? <clears throat> no, I'm listening with great interest. Okay. All right, so so that we do know, so, so. That gives you like that. So, so if we were if we were just to say right, if we were to go, so you would know that to get <clears throat> just sixty five percent is approximately forty five thousand dollars. Yeah, it looks like what's Heather saying, the account, the uh, treasurer. Okay. So on the 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 last time we were talking last week, we talked about the the new program in offering at sixty five percent instead of sixty. Right, mm -hmm. Do, and, but we don't have any numbers on that, right? Right. Yeah, this is where it starts getting complicated because then you can say, all right, well, if our current plan has more benefits than the other ones, you know, maybe we could, like you were saying, Jeff, like cut it back a little bit so that you could still do that. But then you have to keep in mind that somebody will lose something in a plan. You know, we could, it's one of those things, you can design a vehicle to cost, but you're going to lose something. You know what I mean? Like, we can make it cheaper, but nothing is free. So we're going to lose something for it. So the question is, is what do we lose and is that palatable to people to have more? And that's where it starts getting really complex because you can't make a blanket decision because every person's medical situation is different. Correct. So like and we can say, oh, good, sorry. No, I, I was just going to say, you know, that that forty five thousand, in my mind, or whatever that number is, yeah. is going to be the bare minimum because, yes. to some degree, we're making it more attractive to use the town's health insurance, which is not a bad thing. But the more people that we subscribe, we're now paying sixty five percent of each of those subscriptions. Wow. Yeah, and so um, we just. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that yeah. that's a, a budgeting challenge right. so, that I have to. So, so Crystal, when, when on on what was a th what were the thoughts on offering the the new plan from the personnel committee? So the personnel committee wanted to recommend, or I think we did recommend using the or adding the new plan, but at this point, this first year, not knowing. The impact. So, so what? How how does that plan affect? It's it's less expensive. Yes. It's less expensive. It okay. has a much smaller network. You can't use Mass General. You can't use Tufts. You can't use Brigham and Women's. It, it's a very confined network, but it's a lower cost. Yeah. Um. You know. We don't know how many people that would appeal to. Do you, do you are you, are you thinking that there may be any changeovers to it? There may, but you don't know. The teachers did a survey. They got twenty three responses, and there were I think it was five people who would definitely switch, and seven who might switch out of twenty three responses. To be really clear, Crystal, can I just clarify one thing you said? Um, those hospital facilities of Mass General Brigham and Women's and Tufts, those hospitals would be excluded, but not the entire 
Brigham network. Like our, our mm -hmm. Cooley Dickinson system is under the Brigham. Cooley Bell. Dickinson will still be under it. Cooley, yeah. Right. Cooley, Cooley Dick is and under it. And Bay State systems, basically everything in Western Mass would still be covered. It's only if you are, you know, going to Boston for specialized treatments that yep. you would be impacted. And your emergency so. and urgent care out of state would still be covered, so you can go on vacation and still visit if you have an accident. Right. How much less expensive is it? Thirteen percent. That's it. Right. You don't know how many great, people. Yeah, it's still got the great copay and the <clears throat> deductible. Right, so that's the thing. It still has you're, you're just you you have a smaller network, right? But you still have zero copay for day surgery. You still have zero copay for so how, hospitalization. So how how important are the are in this in in this to me? I mean, I have an opinion from my family. Mm -hmm. How how important are copays? Well, well, that really depends. So on it, it depends on the yeah. person, right? So I'll mm. use my health insurance plan as an example. I have a fifty dollar copay for physical therapy. My husband recently had a shoulder replacement. He's going to physical therapy three times a week for twelve weeks. That fifty dollar copay comes out to $600 a month. I'm paying out of pocket for him to go to physical therapy. So having zero copay for something like that is huge if you have to use it. Right. If you don't use it, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You take a child having allergy shots. You go once a week for an allergy shot for the first year. If you have a big enough copay, that can have, can have yeah, big impact. It can have a big impact on you financially versus having a ten dollar copay versus a fifty dollar copay for something like that. So it's so individualized who you know, so my company pays a great percentage, but because they pay a great percentage, I have you know, I have high deductibles, I have high co-pays. It, it's a trade-off, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it would be great if, you know, no one in my family, you know, if I was 28 years old, healthy as a horse, and nobody was using insurance, you know, they're paying a great percentage and life goes on. But, you know... What does it take to put you, you know, what is it you want to trade off? Right. I, I do, I've always thought this, it, uh, it, that's always the one thing I do appreciate with, with Maya is that they work with us, right? I, I mean, because we, we and, and that, that's one advantage, you know, you can pretty much set and I know GIC you don't you have much less they offer more plans they have 12 or 13 plans probably so you have more plans and so if you decide to go with GIC do you have to do you offer all of their plans or can you pick out what plans that you offer um, I believe the my rep said that you I don't know. Do you know Jessica? I don't know either. I thought she said you have to, but. Um, but so, are there more expensive plans than we offer now? Um, with with I don't, GIC? I don't know. I just picked the one that was closest to our current offerings to do comparisons. So we're going to find that out too. Is there more expensive? Yeah, I mean, the, the other thing, you know that we can and again i think a longer you know runway to get it right is 
we could say, hey, we have two good plans that if, if people know they have, you know, a number of visits and co-pays, you probably want to look at these plans. If you're younger and you're looking to save money or invest at other places and you don't think you're going to need it, right. you know, we start other. with this blue select and then we go, okay, well, if we want to increase the employer share and make it more affordable for this baseline to get more people, but I guess I'm, I'm concerned to your point, Jessica, about how many people are going to jump on the blue select plan, even at 60% and what that could do to our budget. Right. Um, new people not moving around. And so, you know, I think I, I tend to be more conservative um, and, and take one step at a time um, and then say, okay, this is how many people join. Now we know what the budget's gonna look like for next year. If we reduce it a certain amount, or if we change the co-pays in, in order to change the employer contribution, we at least have a baseline to work from. But I'd, I'd like to, I, I would like to have the conversation about, again, because we, about getting our employees at 65%. I think that that's been a goal for the last four or five years, but through the COVID thing, we haven't we haven't had. I mean, I, I know it was something Scott Scott was concerned about, and David has been concerned about it right along. Also, we just haven't had the resources. But I, and I'm glad we're talking about it now because it, it it's not as comp, it's not as complicated as just it, it's looking at the total benefit. To me, it's looking at the total benefit package I, and. Right. And and sometimes and sometimes you know copays are important, you know. Well, and the other thing is I and somebody. I I I like the fact, and I that when I, when I my past job is early in the my working there we were changing providers every we only had one like well actually one option and he was and we were changing like every other year we would go. Health New England, and we had Kaiser, and then the next year, oh, was, we, yeah, and, 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 and yeah, yeah, it was and, constant, yeah, and it, and it was difficult. And I just know it was difficult at the time. I had a young family, and you know, get making sure you had the the the, the pediatrician, and yep. it was it was an important thing. But and all of a sudden, that now they're kind of more all most of you know what it is they need versus you know we all want you know you have to the best it. thing that we can afford but right. we need to understand what's the baseline like what <laughs> we need to understand like <clears throat> where people don't want to go below in terms of coverage and things like that too. right or you know what is a reasonable <clears throat> deductible to have you know yeah, and th and that's one of those things too that varies depending it, it's, on right and it, your it, family income and right. how often you have to go and yeah, I mean my plan has a five thousand dollar deductible per person up to a max, you know, of two people. Yeah, but yeah, so that might not be reasonable for everybody. Exactly, you know, it's tough. It, it's a tough balancing act of hitting the right percentage of employer contribution versus the right pers you know the right everything else on it but our medical system is perfect so i don't know what the problem is mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm just I, I, being sarcastic again, I, I, <laughs> uh, I know again i think i think it's important to be fair to the, to the employees, and I do understand, you know, and it's in. It'd be easy, or maybe just to see what's to replicate what the other town that in our district that has sixty five percent, and replicate that that plan with with the with the co pays and whatever, and see what that would cost. 
Yeah, you could do that right and say, hey, they've got this. What do we have? Because at least you could kind of compare. Right, you're comparing something much sense? more similar. Say it one more time. Go, go to Deerfield and see what, they're, the, what they offer. I think they offer the Hampshire Trust plan. Yeah, so, so you'd, you'd put... We can... Yeah, so and, 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 so, and see, they're at 65% with the deductibles, same deductibles, because their deductibles are different than ours, right? Yep. Yeah. And, and Jessica? Just a, one additional piece of information I haven't heard mentioned is that Maya doesn't have a single standard rate for any of their one plans. It, um, of all of the municipalities that use Maya, they have a 12 point spread of one town may, may pay 12% more than another town based on their employees' claims. Yep. Which means that in one year you could have a 10% or more swing in your rates if your employees use their insurance a lot. Yep. So you can be asked to match rates to New Hampshire and match the package that Hampshire offers next year. Then if, if then our employees use it a lot, we have say a baby boom among our, our employees, which costs a lot on, on insurance. The next year right, we can still see up. a 10% jump. And that's that's actually just thank you, Jessica. That's that's actually one of the reasons why we stayed away from GIC when the first when GIC was first offered. You remember, were you there on the board, David, at that time when GIC was first offered? We the commissioner the commissioner of GIC met us at a, a select board association out in uh, Charlemont. Uh, I'm mean, not Charlemont, but uh, yeah, Charlemont at the Mohawk because we were on and in Hampshire. That and, and that was what was. That they were saying because they they figured that all the cities and towns that had poor rates or their their history their cases were all going to be joined in GIC so that was going to increase the entire like the pool and they and they their pool was going to just what you said was going to be more expensive because they were taking on all those poor performing municipalities. So that was gonna drive the costs up. So that's that's one reason I believe that we didn't go in. But you you're absolutely right about your your each GIC your, now has a fixed rate for every plan. It's very transparent. It's on their website and Maya right. is the only one that doesn't do that. Maya is the only one that does have a rate spread. Yep. Yeah. Thank you for just throwing another wrench in our little. Uh -huh. No problem. <laughs> uh, but it, no it's a, but that but that's that's the other thing that you sometimes you're, you're never. It's a lot of things to think about. Mm -hmm. Right, it's a lot it's of factors not, involved. I'm doing that more time. <laughs> uh, no, I, 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 know, I know we went through this because, and 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 then when we got out, when we got out of the, out of the Franklin um, Health Plan, that they, we had there was monies that they held back because of plans that, so they didn't distribute the money back to us until like six years after it was a long time after after we left because they were closing and my maya discussed that too and i think gic does the opposite or both where you actually have to pay up front to get in for any claims that might come in and then they hold the money for a number of years for any claims that might yeah it, come it, out it was later there, there's there's sometimes there's there's and i mean we had and it, it it's to handle any claims or right that could have been happened when they were I haven't done this in a long time so I for I don't I forget their terminology but there's no magic solution really I mean that's with the way everything is set up I mean all you can do is kind of pick the best thing and because you can never You can never cover everybody's situation. There's just too many variables. So all you can do is go for the the you best you can be get. Fair. Just try to be yeah. fair. Yeah, and I think I think a survey would be helpful if yeah. it, if it's properly crafted. Right. That's that, the key. Because it could turn out, hey, price is not as important to us as you know what our copays or our benefits are, and having that information is valuable as well in crafting. So, so can we craft, can we craft a survey that that uh, Heather can can get out there as a start, but maybe maybe go through. I mean, I'm I'm sure we yeah. can start crafting that letter or yeah. that survey, right? And Maya could be able to help you with that. 
yep. or GIC or wh whomever. Wouldn't you want the insurance company, the insurance committee to do that? I, I would. Instead I, of pushing I, through it now? Yeah. We can. I, I, was just trying to, I was just trying to move the process forward. GIC and Hampshire are not an option for the near term, so I don't see a reason to rush such a survey. Yeah. They'd have a good charter and plenty of activities to get rolling with, that's for sure. But at a minimum, I can do outreach both to Maya and to other towns and say, have you ever done something like this? And can you send me examples so that at least we have a baseline to start crafting from or for the okay, committee that's to start? That's true, Jeff. That's a good idea. Is that, that, that makes sense. That, because you want to get, A, we want to get it done before school gets out for the summer. Because once school gets out, then it may be much more difficult to get hold of. Yeah, people. Right. So we want to get we we want to get that out soon. And the ideal time would be during open enrollment when they're here talking about the plans anyway. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Let's do that. So going back to blue select. That's the plan you're recommending that we add? Select blue? Is what is it blue select, select blue? HMO blue select. And select. So is there any is there any is there any appetite to go to sixty five percent with that? The trouble is we don't know how many people because yeah, it's a new plan. It's a new plan. We don't know how many people would take it. Yeah. There's a thirteen percent saving, so there's potential that somebody may choose to take that because it might now be a cheaper plan than their spouse has and we may end up with a two-person or family or whatever and until we so that was there was a savings already associated with it we thought that this first year and that, that was from the personnel committee discussion yes. right yeah Let's look and see what type of changes we see based on this. And then that gives us better information whether the 65 become the 65 percent, if there's a cost savings on that lower one, mm -hmm. that helps fund that 65 percent for everybody, right? Right. That's correct. So until we could truly see what we were going to get for numbers, that was really kind of where we, you know, that's kind of where we ended up was let's offer it, see what we get, see what there is for change to that plan. And it, okay. it gives us a place to work from there. Jessica? I have a question about process. Um, is there any reason that we could wait until our open enrollment closes and then we see how many people have switched and what our savings are? You know how many people joined during our open enrollment and then if we could move that plan to 65 percent and stay within what we've already budgeted is there any reason we couldn't bump it to 65 percent at that point when we've got very hard numbers it's not even a survey it's people have actually enrolled i think the only thing at that point is we're already into our budget and if the costs go up we'd have to cut something if the costs go up for health insurance in other words if we have to pay more out of the town budget to pay because we don't know right now who would switch over. No, but I'm saying once everybody who could switch has, has switched and they're not allowed to switch anymore. Yep. If enough people switched and we're saving enough money, then could we bump? Could we, is there any reason logistically uh, if, it would stay within the if we end up saving it mm, for that one plan you're talking about, right? For that one plan, having a bifurcated contribution. Right, but then people are signing up for a plan, not actually knowing what their percentage is. They, they know well, you'd have to go in knowing the current percentage, right? And then. But it might get better. I mean, mechanically, I guess. So, I, I guess one concern, Maybe not, one but. potential concern that I would have is if there's a new hire in the middle of the year they become eligible for health insurance if they decide yeah. to jump on the plan um it could make it go outside the budget and i don't think we could treat that new employee any differently than somebody who entered during open enrollment yeah, um, right 
But that has nothing to do with our percentage of contribution. If, if we didn't change the contribution and we hired a new employee, we'd have to accommodate them anyway and figure that into the budget somehow. Right. Right, but your suggestion is premised on the idea that the town would be saving money. And what I'm saying is that we won't know that until the end of the fiscal year because somebody could join after open enrollment, after the budget is set. We go, okay, look, if the town goes to 65 on this plan, we budgeted exactly the right amount. We're all set. We can go to 65 with the current enrollment. And then a new employee comes in and says, I'd like that plan too, or I'd like any plan. Any plan. You know, um, well, we always have that little buffer in there, right? Of a couple of family plans. Yeah. To, right, but we don't questions. even know if that little buffer is enough for potential switching due to having no. well, the a only way to do it is to, We don't have enough time to do a survey beforehand, so we're just going to have to do it and see right. what happens. But then the question is: is okay? Let's say people. I guess we have to see how many people switch. Right, and that's all. But, I think you just need to let it settle because then once you let that settle, you now have a number you can work with to see if right. you can... Which you can go from, from there. To, get, to help you get to 65 for everybody, not 65 for a certain percentage. Right, because that's... We now know what that savings is, and if $47,000 is the cost difference, but now... Due to the people that are switched, things like that. It's going to affect that as well. We now may reduce that 47000 down to 37000 Right. And make it now in range for everybody versus right, just, just that one group. a chunk of people. Because I don't know what percentage of the overall folks who will take that plan. Right. And, and I think the goal is 65 for everybody versus all right we're gonna let this group go to 65 right because they switched and that's where the savings is but that 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 we really i don't see right we're trying to get everybody yes and make it reduced for everybody yeah. and crystal correct me if i'm wrong but i just want to mention that the personnel committee did try to explore I'll say creative options where it was well only people who are currently taking can only people currently on the town's health plan move to this new health plan like and I, the, yeah, yeah and I think that hmm. I don't think that we can <laughs> yeah and I don't think we right right but, I, but I'm, I guess the right. my point was that that the personnel committee did try and we talked about all different, different bunch of different options options to do this and it just seems like at least to me the goal is to get everybody to 65 and whether that takes you know i mean we even like try looking at numbers of rate you know raising everybody to you know 62 and with the next year of oh, hoping yeah, to win that 64 and, you know yeah. and that just yeah it just it just wasn't there, there's too much unknown, and I think we need to see, offering that new plan, what that does to the overall to numbers. Change. I'm going to be curious to see, because right. given what it offers, it may not be, some people might like it, some people might not. Right. Yeah, like I know the highway department has people that live out of state. So now to say that, you know, these are your right. limited house, you know, your limited, you know, where it might it work for them, be. but it might not. Yep. So it's. You all set? Yep. You all set? Yeah. Understood. Okay, um, Jeff, let's. Uh, we got we got directions, right? Yep. Okay. Thank you, Jessica. Any idea how long it will take to get an insurance committee started? And is there anything I can do to help with that along? Um, there are. I mean, part of it depends. <laughs> 
right now the priority is town meeting um, and being prepared for that and having a balanced budget um, but this week I'm gonna do the outreach to start collecting surveys and I'm happy to pass that along as far as the actual committee formation um, I need to do some research because there are some legal requirements on how to set that up but they need, need to, to come up with a chart to... yeah a charge and um, we, I think we have to get reviewed uh, and I think we have the I think we may have some of that information but I think it just the statute tells says who needs to be on the committee right yeah and the representatives. And I, have, I got that from my uh, yeah um, okay all right. So we'll put that in. And then we need bodies to fill it. All right. So <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. Jeffrey, um, I, I think uh, next article was just kind of just reviewing what was been talked, so we can go yep. past that. Uh, select board updates. Uh, we had a capital planning committee meeting, so. <laughs> We've kind of talked about that, so yeah. I don't have any other. No other meetings this week. Okay. Crystal? Nothing. Um, select board update, just let everyone know. I've, we, we've, I've heard uh, that Triton Beach, Jeff had talked about it the other day, mm. or a couple meetings ago, about Sunderland being potentially offered to join again, once again. Um, I think we're going to be seeing something in the mail very, very soon about that. They're typically their budget over there is around thirty-five thousand dollars. Their budget thirty-five thousand dollars. I believe Sunderland would be looking at like a twenty-five percent share of that, which would be about fifteen thousand dollars. So, I I think that's what. But we should be seeing something more very shortly about that. And we would have to think about if, if we, they have some plans to change over there, um, certain things. So I think we'll be able to have a conversation. We'll, we'll need to talk about that soon. Okay. If so, if anybody in the audience um, has ideas, thoughts about Sunland joining the town, Tri Town Beach. Please let us know so we can uh, explore that's a possibility of that being offered to us. Okay. Uh, town administrator updates. Um, just a couple. Um, I didn't see it yet, but the framing for the kayak kiosk is supposed to be starting this week. Yeah. So we'll see, see the some, equipment out there and stuff yeah. moving around. There, so. There's a hole. There's a foundation. Yep. <laughs> um, so framing is the next step for that, and I think they're starting to do work on the uh, sidewalk next to the boat ramp as well. They are, because I drove down there. Got stuck. And <laughs> you can't turn around. You have to back out. Oh. I was not go. happy. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll go down and see where... So the, those, the sandbaggy stuff, yep. it goes... Oh, the silt fence. Because they have yeah. to keep the, yeah. yeah. So you can't turn around. So if you drive down there, you've got to so back out. But then there's a dirt to, pile on one side. and Maybe we need to put a little temporary sign. <coughs> I'm surprised they got dirt piles down by the river this time of year. No, it's up at the top oh, when okay. you're trying to back out and say, then swing around yeah, that corner. It would not corner. be good to put a dirt pile right down here. Yeah. No. So I had trouble with my boat trailer backing out? Well, I don't know. Maybe you can back out better than I can. Maybe with a, a tobacco rack on a tractor, maybe, but... Um, speaking of the boat ramp, just a heads up that we got an application um, for All Out Adventures. They typically yep. do that uh, looking at September 11th, uh, which is a Sunday, or the following Sunday, the 18th. Yep. Um, so just sent that out today to police, fire, EMS let the library know as well, a big crowd. And then um, talked to Jim Ewan about the Memorial Day Parade, which we're looking at um, May 27th. And I'm 
knock on wood, <laughs> so far we, we can have a parade this year. Yep. Not expecting that to change, so um, okay. we're, we're in planning for that. But he did mention that he's looking at options for the band because apparently the Frontier Marching Band is severely depleted this year. Um, so not sure that they Want me to get my trumpet out? I can practice. I can play the Hey Jude pretty good. I, I will let the I band think. director know that we have a volunteer. <laughs> um, All right, if he has a spare sousaphone, I could play the sousaphone. Um, yeah, but I, I think I'm the, pretty good. Does Chicago twenty five six to four? I can do that one really well, or I used to. I probably have to practice though. <laughs> could be interesting doing taps on the sousaphone. <laughs> You could do it. Probably do it. Yeah. You just same transpose same, it. Same, the, same, the fingerings would be the same. So, mm -hmm. um, so anyway, they wanted to mention it because we are, we're going back to the parade. It's right. been a it's couple of years. Here. And um, so Jim will do the, the regular invitations for elected yep. officials and organizations and everything, but wanted to put it on people's radar who may have been disappointed the last couple of years that it didn't happen. Me included. Okay. Anything else? That's it. So, a question about that: uh, we have we have leftover money from the capital stabilization this year, twenty one thousand. Can we apply that to the? Because it was the capital stabilization that the money was short of, wasn't it? Oh, put that. Just think about. You, you don't have to have an answer, Peter. Do you want to add something? No, I just hit the damn button by mistake. And so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Peter, you We're boring him. He got a little sleepy, huh? Uh, you well, know, I'm getting old, dude. Health, health insurance is a tough, to, tough thing to discuss. I'm sorry. I, it's... I, I, what is it's complicated? There's no simple no, easy Because you want to be answers. fair. You know, you want to be fair. You want to be fair to your employees. Right. And the current well, employees and the 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 people that pay the salaries, right? So you want to be fair. And that's the, and that's what we're trying to do. So All right. Anything else? Uh, nope. Anything else? I'm good. All right. Everybody's falling asleep, so that's a good time. I'm motion. Hungry. I motion we adjourn. <laughs> second. A yeah, motion made and seconded to adjourn this fine meeting this evening. Any further discussion? Without hearing any further discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Please declare us out at eight forty-five, Jeff.